Hi chemistry students. One of the things we need to be able to do in chemistry 11 is count the number of atoms in a molecule. And here I've got a picture of a water molecule in front of us and I think that when we have a picture of a, uh, a compound or a molecule it's really easy to see how many atoms uh, of, of each element are in that compound. So here when we look at water we can see that the, um, the big red atom in the center here is oxygen and then we've got two hydrogen atoms that are attached to it on either side of, of the water molecule. Most of you are familiar with, with the shape of a water molecule. And so if I look at this picture, it's pretty easy. I can say, okay, I've got one atom of oxygen, and I'll use the element symbol O, and I've got two atoms of hydrogen. And that is, it's pretty obvious and it's pretty simple. In chemistry 11, most of the time we are not given um, a ball and stick model or a, a pictorial representation of the compound that we're dealing with. Most of the time in chemistry 11 and 12, we're given formulas like H2O. And we just learned how to write a formula in the last, uh, in the last unit. And we know that these little subscripts in the formula refer to how many atoms of that element are in the compound. So here, again, we're pretty familiar with water, so it's a great one to start with. We know that this formula tells us that there are two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen just by looking at the formula itself and looking at the subscripts that are within it. So what we're going to do now is have a look at different formulas. We're not going to be looking at models of the compounds, but looking at the formulas and trying to count the number of each element in the compound. And also, we need to be able to find the total number of atoms in a compound. So it's important that we, if we're asked to find, for example, just the number of hydrogen atoms in a molecule of water, that we can do that. But we should also be able to count them all up uh, and get a, give a total number of atoms. So we need to pay a little bit of attention to the wording as we carry on after this lesson and we start to do some questions. What are they really asking us? So here, counting the number of atoms in a molecule, very simply, we would look at our formula and the subscript that follows an element symbol refers to how many atoms of that element are present in the compound. So the two here refers to the hydrogen. So we know that there are two hydrogen atoms, as we said. And there is no subscript after the oxygen, which means there's an imaginary one there. And that one would refer to the oxygen only. And so we would say there's one oxygen atom. So we've identified the number of specific atoms of each element in water. And we can also add these together and say that in total, there are one, two, three atoms present in one mo molecule of water. So that would be our total number of atoms. And it's just as simple as that. We're going to add up all of the atoms that we've counted in our molecule. Let's do a, uh, a couple of uh, examples that are going to become increasingly more complex. I'm starting with some simple ones here just to get, in, to get us uh, comfortable with it. So here we've got manganese phosphate. And uh, I've got a, a subscript here at 4. Uh, but we need to be a little bit careful when we look at this. There are no brackets around uh, the PO4. And so all of my... Uh, my subscripts here, I've got a little imaginary one after the MN, a little imaginary one after the phosphorus. They are all referring to, to that element that they, they come after. So here, the four only refers to the oxygen. So if I were to individually identify how many atoms of each element I have, I have one atom of manganese. I have only one atom of phosphorus, element P, and I have four atoms of oxygen. The reason why I'm pointing this out for us is because in the last unit where we had to um, name and write formulas for ionic compounds, you might remember that this ionic compound um, the manganese has, uh, has a charge, and it is 3 plus here. 
and the phosphate is actually a polyatomic ion with a three negative charge and we often um, when we're when we're naming it well for sure when we're naming it we consider this polyatomic ion like a single unit um, though the, the phosphorus and the oxygen are covalently bound together and that ion is attracted to the positive metal ion the manganese ion and so um, it's it's we're kind of in the mindset of thinking about the P and the O together. What, what I want to just point out here is that yes, these are covalently bonded and they are a polyatomic ion, but if we're asking ourselves how many atoms of each element are present, there would be one phosphorus atom attached to these four oxygen atoms within this polyatomic ion. So here when we're looking at the number of atoms, we're looking at the formula and we're looking at each individual element symbol as representing that atom in the compound. Let's do another example here. Oh, sorry, I'm going to come back one moment. So I identified all of the individual uh, atoms of each element in this compound and now to find the total number of atoms, if I were asked to do that, I would simply add them up. So I have 1 plus 2, 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6. So all together in this compound, in one, in one molecule of, of this compound, I have 6 atoms. Let's do an example where we have some brackets. And brackets are very important to recognize when we're looking at a formula because they identify that there is more than one, either more than one polyatomic ion or perhaps more than one molecule within the compound. So here um, we have a little two outside our brackets and that two refers to everything that's inside the brackets. So I have a hypochlorite ion inside these brackets. You're not uh, required to I immediately identify the names of polyatomic ions. You have your chart if you needed to look up the name of it. But this inside is hypochlorite, CLO, and the two tells me that there are two of those polyatomic ions present in this bigger compound. So the strontium uh, metal ion is attached to two hyper hypochlorite uh, ions. So let's figure out individually though how many atoms of each element do we have. So we'll start with the strontium and this is the, the simplest one. We have a little invisible one after the strontium. Okay, That 2 does not apply to the strontium because the strontium is not within the brackets. So there's simply one atom of strontium. And we're going to look at individually the chlorine and the oxygen. So the chlorine, if I look at it, within the brackets there's one chlorine and one oxygen, but the two outside the brackets tells me that there's two of each. Okay, so I've got two atoms of chlorine, and for my oxygen I also have two atoms present. All together, what's the total number of atoms that I have? Once you've figured out how many individual atoms you have, we simply add them together. We have 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5. So altogether there are 5 atoms in one compound. Okay. Let's do an even tougher example. This is a great one. We've got a hydrate here. I'm going to put a little dot between the water molecule and the ionic salt. And this looks a little bit complicated. Really it's not. Um, Again, we're going to break this down slowly. Let's first, before we uh, we deal with the water at the end, let's just first look at the, the copper nitrate. So let's look at this part right here. Okay, We're going to break this into sort of two, let's call this A, and then let's call the hydrate B. And we're just going to look at it separately for a moment to make it a little easier for ourselves. You might be getting the hang of it and starting to think, hey, I could do this really quickly in my head, and that's great. So first off, when I look at my copper nitrate, I see that I have only a, uh, one atom of copper. Okay, The copper is not, not in the brackets here, so if I'm looking at my copper atoms, I have one. 
Now the nitrate, NO3, is enclosed in some brackets and there is this little 2 on the outside of the brackets, a subscript 2. The 2 tells me that there are two nitrate ions at present here, attached to the copper atom. So, or I should say the copper ion. So this 2 is going to apply to everything inside the brackets. Okay, so that means that there's two nitrogen atoms. And when we look at the number of oxygen atoms, we need to recognize that in one ion of nitrate, there are three oxygen atoms. So if we have two nitrate ions here, we, have, we are going to take that two and we are going to multiply it by the three. So we have two times three. So when you have a subscript outside the brackets, if there are any other subscripts in the brackets, you are going to multiply those two subscripts together for that individual element. So 2 times 3 atoms is equal to 6 atoms of oxygen Okay, in my copper nitrate. Let's, there's a, that we, so there's A. Now let's look at B. So let's look at the hydrate here, okay? So a hydrate uh, has a special formula where we show the number of water molecules that are attached to an ionic compound. So these water molecules are actually just um, attached around the copper nitrate, and they're in, there are a total of six of them. So here's a good example where we actually have a coefficient or a number right in our formula. Um, which is sort of unusual for most compounds, but it is, we would see that for a hydrate. So again here, we're going to look at water, okay, on its own first, and then we're going to multiply by this coefficient or this number six, because there's six water molecules surrounding this. So let's start with our, our hydrogen. So in the hydrate, well in one water molecule I have two hydrogens, I have two atoms of hydrogen, but I have this six on in the front, and so this six applies to everything that follows it, okay? So I have six times two atoms of hydrogen here. So six times two is 12 atoms. Okay, the oxygen present in my water molecules if I count the number of oxygens, there's there's just one oxygen in each water molecule, but again I have six altogether, so it's just simply six times one, which is six atoms of oxygen. Okay, so I've got my total breakdown here, but before I carry on and I say this is my final answer, I need to recognize that I do see oxygen in two places. I've got oxygen here, in my nit in my uh, in my copper nitrate in the nitrate i've also got it in the water molecule over here so i'm going to take my six atoms of oxygen and my other six atoms of, of oxygen and all together i can write that i've got 12 atoms of oxygen so if i wanted to write this all out i could i could simply um, put these two together So I've got 12 atoms of oxygen all together here. And then I could go ahead and just cross out, cross out one of them if I wanted to add them together and keep it really simple. So this is a good example of a more complicated formula where we've got not only brackets and subscripts, but we've also got um, some coefficients right in the formula.